Hi, welcome to Fossil Hunting and Collecting with Chris. Today we're doing something a little bit different. It is too cold for fossil collecting today. It is 19 degrees outside. So instead, we are on our way to Garvey's Museum and Preserve in Glen Cove, New York. This museum has a lot of information on, it gives a, a whole range of all the shells that can be found in the Northern Atlantic. It has some fossils, and it also has quite a bit of Native American artifact, things that we can see. Basically tells the history of Long Island through its prehistoric animals, current aquatic animals, current invertebrates, and a little bit of our Native American heritage. So we are on our way there today. Uh, today, Donald, my son Donald, is doing the filming. So thank you, Donald. And we hope to have some nice stuff to show everybody. So come along, and I hope you enjoy. I'm not going to be giving an exhaustive list of what is here. If you want to see what's here, you really need to come visit. Just a couple of highlights of our visit and a little bit of talk about the fossils that are here. Also, this is a protected site. This is, we're not here to collect fossils. We're not here to do any collecting whatsoever. This is a protected site and the, the fossils or artifacts that are found here are curated and protected by the uh, people who put together this wonderful museum. So this is just our visit, a couple of highlights to give you an idea what it's like. We hope you enjoy the visit. It is a something a little bit different now. We're just going out and seeing a site because it is too cold for fossil collecting in any of our collectible locations. Also, just a reminder, if you like these videos, please go ahead and subscribe. Subscribing doesn't cost anything. It just makes more of these fossil videos pop up in the YouTube feed. Thank you so much. Thank you for all the comments and all the people who have come and watched these fossil videos so far. Enjoy. Okay, class, we are at the Garvey's Point Museum and Preserve in Glen Cove, Long Island. If you take a look over to the... If you look over here, you'll see that we're up on a moraine overlooking Hempstead Harbor below. This is all glacial material that was pushed up by the most recent glacial advance about 22,000 years ago. If you look directly below us, we have a huge rock. This huge rock is a glacial erratic. It was actually pushed up here and dropped by glaciers. It was actually probably well up inside the ice. And when the ice melted, it dropped, and now we have this very big rock, very big glacial erratic. The uh, cove itself, also formed by glaciers, we have these huge moraines, these big piles of sand and dirt and till that were on. And down there was probably a, uh, a valley carved by glaciers uh, and glacial waters pushing towards the south. So we're about to go into Garvey's Point Museum now. If my memory is correct, it's been about more than 20 years since I've been here. We should be able to see shells, we should be able to see fossils, and also some local Native American artifacts. Let's go. So I can't help it. I'm gonna start off with the fossil room. Yes, those are mammoth bones. We'll take a closer look at them soon. This room covers all the Paleozoic with a specific emphasis on Long Island's geologic history. Here's a general map of plate tectonics, and below it is how plate tectonics affected our region, the eastern coast of the United States, which will eventually lead to the formation of Long Island. Do you recognize him? That's Alfred Wegener, the person who first gave us continental drift Metamorphism, a really good example of how rocks can get so folded by all the heat and pressure they're subjected to. Oh. Here is their mineral display. Now I'm not gonna go very much into the minerals here for two reasons. One, you should probably come and take a look at 
them for yourself. And the other is I'm not as much a mineral expert as a fossil expert. So come see the minerals if you want to see them. Okay, now I'm in the zone. Now we are in the fossil area. Some really nice specimens to take a look at. Here we see, ah, Isotilus gigas. Very similar to the one that I had found upstate. Their specimen though looks much nicer. Wow, a complete, very nicely complete Isotilus gigas. So here we're looking at some really beautiful fossils. We have some very nice cephalopods, looks like an orthoceros. Some graptolites, those things on the shiny things on the black rock. And some bryozoan. Around the other side, we can see brachiopods, lots of brachiopods. Some nice trilobites. Looks like maybe a phacops. And, okay, some, I think they're bivalves, or could be shrimp. Uh, and a nice sea star. Ah, Favocytes. Favocytes are a really beautiful coral that we find in the early Devonian or middle, early to mid Devonian. We'll see a lot of that. Some sponges, another trilobite. Looks like, can't really tell. The head's a little bit too damaged. And here is the mammoth. Can't really tell it's a mammoth or mastodon. The way you can tell the difference is by the teeth. Wow, huge leg bone. The mastodons have very large kind of chunky teeth, whereas the mammoths have teeth with uh, more fine razor-like grinding stuff, as we can see here, for eating grass. Here are some common glacial rocks we see on Long Island. We're now going to see a little bit about the formation of Long Island. Long Island is formed by glaciers, two moraines, two large areas of material that were pushed off Connecticut by glaciers. The lower one about 50,000 years ago, the upper one about 22,000 years ago. Here's a nice topographical map. Here is a journey through the Paleozoic of our region, including some Gilboa trees, trees preserved from the late Devonian. Happen to remember from school what these uh, bony headed fish are? The fish that have the bones on the outside, almost like turtles. I know of them, I don't remember their names. The general group of them is called placoderms. Okay, okay, I've heard placoderms recently. I'm trying to remember where I heard it from. Oh. I love this diorama of the Devonian fish. Never actually saw this before, it's really cool. We have placoderms, those fish that had the bones on their outsides, almost like turtles over most of their body. And uh, I'll have to fill in what the name of those are, I actually forgot. But these are really well done dioramas and I've never seen these before. I'm very glad that we came. I love this. They have our New York State fossil up here. Ripterids, which are found upstate New York and in Canada, are a very enigmatic fossil from our region, from the Silurian. Well, over here they have a couple of well-preserved Ripterid parts and a full one down here. They have a book from the 19th century which describes Ripterids. I'm very proud that I actually have two copies of the three books set on Ripterids. And they have the full thing over here um, with some really beautiful illustrations in it. New York State fossil on the New York State Regents exam for any of my students. The Ripterid, basically a scorpion, a sea scorpion 
that could have gone up to about 12 feet or about uh, four meters in length. They were very big creatures. Their tails, they're actually the ancestors of modern scorpions, but their tails were not poisonous because they didn't need to be when they were a top predator and could get up to 12 feet long. So this is why Garvey's Point is so special and why it became uh, preserved in the first place. It has some exposure of the Raritan formation. This red clay, now it's uh, solid, now it's shale, but it was red clay about 80 million years ago that actually had been eroding off of Connecticut. Connecticut, all the materials that were eroding away from Connecticut were washing into the ocean. The uh, Long Island didn't exist then. We were created at, by glaciers on Long Island. And the stuff that was running off Connecticut was actually going right into the ocean. So we got this thick layer of, a, of this raritan clay that was uh, eroding from Connecticut about 80 million years ago. And we get a lot of plants are found inside these rocks. So very often, if you go on the north shore of Long Island, in certain places, the rare formation outcrops usually under the water. It's actually usually in the Long Island Sound, which was later carved by glaciers, ripped into this layer. It outcrops un in the ocean, and sometimes these rocks wash up onto the beach with these fossils. Usually plants, occasionally seeds, and other things are found inside these fossils. Here we have a display of sedimentary structures. Oh, I wish I could take my earth science class here. And we also see a little story about James Hutton, the father of geology, the first person to study in depth the way that layers of rocks form. And speaking of earth science, we were just talking about Kettle Lakes, and here we have a step-by-step -step set of dioramas showing how Kettle Lakes actually form from huge chunks of ice that have calved off a glacier to basically holes in the ground where water can fill in. Different, very different creatures. For example, squids and octopus are actually very closely related to snails and to bivalves, basically the things that we call clams and, and, uh, and mussels are actually very closely related to squid. It turns out that they diverged into a bunch of different varieties in deep time and ended up with very different bodies. This display here shows you to some degree how they are related to each other. And this museum has an incredible display of seashells, all different types of mollusks, whether it's bivalves, snails, or even cephalopods. There are actually dozens of cases. So once again, I'm just gonna give you a little teaser. If you wanna take the time to go see them all, go down to this museum and look at their beautiful collection 
of hundreds, maybe thousands of different varieties of seashells. One other thing that this museum is well known for is its spectacular display of archeological artifacts from very early Long Island to the present. The materials come mostly from Long Island, although there are some displays with artifacts from other Native American cultures. The way the museum does it is both respectful and very informative. I think they do a really good job. I believe this place is also visited by some Native Americans for ceremonies on different times of the year. I remember this from years ago when we first came. Uh, this is a sort of mock-up of a burial site when you very often find a lot of clam shells because the quahog or these large clams are what they, one of the things that they lived on. And also they have a, a replica of a Native American burial here. And if I remember correctly, when I came here over 20 years ago, there was an actual skeleton here, but I guess because of the, uh, for sensitivity reasons, it looks like they removed the action and put a replica skeleton in there. Um, but this gives you a really good idea of what it would look like if you were an archaeologist and working on one of these sites. Over here we see a chronology of the types of stone tools that can be found on Long Island over the roughly 13 to 14,000 years that it's been inhabited. There are regional changes and sometimes changes over time so that although there are many similarities, there's generally a distinctive change between one major type and the other. At Garvey's Point, they also do explaining the archaeology. They show how signs on the bones, signs of wear, signs of stress on bones indicating heavy work, can tell the difference between males and females usually from the bones. Uh, in this case, the male pelvis here shows a lot of wear and work. The female shows signs of having given birth. The teeth here do not seem to have any visible dental work, which would tend to indicate that they are probably a few centuries old. The actual skeletons, which are on display here, are non-Native American skeletons.
continuing with the archaeology, they do a great job of showing the history of Native Americans on Long Island with a, with a set of dioramas. Once again, I'm not going to show you everything. You need to go to the museum if you want to see everything. Dioramas are very complete and very archaeologically accurate. I'm going to show you a couple of peaks here, but there's actually a lot more here that which shows the change of cultures on Long Island over the past 13,000 years. It's broken up into what they consider the Paleo Indians, Archaic, uh, Woodland, and Contact. That spoon is awesome. Looks almost like something you could find at a craft fair. Turns out I have an ancestor who landed on Long Island, New York in 1640. So that guy could be an ancestor. Here are some objects from the European contact period. The museum also has a diorama of archaeologists, really showing the work that's done, how they examine the sites, and learn about these ancient cultures. So right here, right now, you're getting a good idea of what Glacial Long Island was like. They certainly picked a good place for this museum on Garvey's Point. This is one of those things that Long Island is famous for, the glacial erratic boulders, these giant boulders that seem to be out of place. And actually they are because they've been pushed by glaciers. You can see crack. These cracks actually fill in with water, and when they freeze, they separate. So eventually, this rock is going to break into smaller pieces. But for now, we have this giant erratic boulder on the beach. I've also noticed this ring of circles around the erratic boulder. It probably has something to do with the Native American ceremonies that still take place here. Beneath the layer of glacial material, we can see clay, this Cretaceous clay kind of oozes out like toothpaste. It's that red and orange and purplish color material that oozes out from underneath the brown sediments. Oh yeah, all those icicles give you an idea of what the temperature's like down here. Here we see Mosquito Cove, a place I don't think I want to be in the summer, and also Hempstead Harbor. And now we're heading back up the moraine on our 
our way home from our visit to this beautiful place. So, I hope you liked our visit to the Garvey's Point Museum and Preserve. A little bit different than what we usually do on these videos. Rather than going out and doing excavations, we're actually seeing how this is presented. And we got a really good look at the historical culture of Long Island and how archaeology is done. A really nice presentation, I think. Done well and respectfully and a great place for anybody to visit. So thank you very much. If you like this type of video, let me know because this is a little bit different from what we normally do. But if you like this, let me know. Give us a thumbs up or hit subscribe. And thank you very much to Donald for doing a lot of the filming on this. And thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed.